friends, I think we're going to get started. Um, I want to thank you all for coming. My name is Kaya Morris. I used to be a Cornell, but I'm a new resident of Burlington and a longtime rabble rouser. I'm here in support of um, all of us because what is happening in the doors behind here um, at City Hall, it has implications for everybody across the state. It's not just Burlington because everyone looks at Burlington as a beacon. And so what Burlington chooses to do or to not do, um, what Burlington chooses to do or to not do, um, it, it changes the lives of everybody in Vermont. And it absolutely signals out to the rest of the world. Um, I do have some prepared remarks. Um, I know myself, I have some things I'd love to be able to say. Kareem has some things she'd love to be able to say. We welcome others that you feel in the past week today. Um, I do want to give just a couple little housekeeping pieces. So again, we're trying to be still here right now. I wish we could say this is a celebration, but it is a celebration and a solidarity. But we are coming together because we have deep concerns. So there's going to be a city council meeting happening inside that building, and we are welcoming you to come and take part if you'd like to bear witness, or if you would like to make a public comment, you are welcome to do so. I believe you have to go inside to actually sign up. Um, they're no longer allowing people to be signed up externally. You have to walk in the door and do that. You're welcome to do so at any time if that moves you. Um, understand it's also going to be a little intense because there's conversations right now around policing. Um, so the conversations are going to be heavy. Some of them may relate to what we're talking about today, and others may not. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, I want to just move to Please, welcome. Oh, no problem. Feel free. Grab a sign, have a seat. It's all good. We're all family. It's all love. So thank you, thank you. So um, I'm going to read my prepared remarks because one of the things that we have really noticed that's been coming out as sort of it feels at this point like rhetoric, is around how do we increase public safety? How do we increase our sense of safety? People in Burlington don't feel safe. But there are really important philosophical and real grounded questions about who deserves that safety, who guarantees that safety, and who do these systems keep safe? Are we actually going to be Whenever conversations about public safety arise, we should always ask ourselves, what does safety mean? Who is afforded the privilege of feeling safe in our modern society where harassment and the threats of violence and enacted violence in a myriad of forms directly impact some persons more profoundly than others? Is safety actually achievable or is it merely aspirational? Finally, how might safety be manipulated to become weaponized against those who have been determined as unworthy of our government and its designated entities broad duty to care and keep ourselves safe. As a child, I witnessed my mother being brutalized by white police officers at a Denny after a white waitress refused to serve my family our food and claimed that we were leaving without paying for it first before being served. The police came because they were called and empowered to exact terror by that business, which had determined that my black mother was a menace to society that needed to be healed through police force and violence. The waitress did not get this sense of entitlement in a vacuum. It was taught to her by her family, strengthened by segregationist laws, which had not yet been dismantled on a societal level even in the 1980s. Some 20 years following the passage of anti-discriminatory laws, see, it was emboldened in her spirit by that business institution, which condoned such treatment of its customers. On such a pervasive level, that a class action lawsuit had to be levied, forcing them to pay more than 54 million back to black customers for them to cease these identical practices that were happening across the country. The culture at Denny's did not change, and there are still reports coming in as recently as 2023 of the exact same tactics being used against black and brown bodies. This, amongst many other experiences of racism in my childhood, it set the stage for a lifetime of never feeling safe in the places where safety is purported to be for you. Yet, I stand before you today, and I can tell you that there are few days in which I do not spend the majority of my time in public spaces doing everything I can within my ability to improve my ability to live, work, and play in Vermont safely. My sense of safety 
is challenged every time I enter into upper middle class white neighborhoods and their businesses. My purse is littered with receipts from every place that I spend my dollars. I never leave any establishment without proof of purchase so that I am fully prepared to defend my integrity in the face of vice accusations. I am apprehensive when in these neighborhoods that are not my own, that someone else's racial prejudices might trigger their own fight response to threaten or bring direct harm to me. I cannot have my son become the next Trayvon Martin or Timmy or Rice simply for enjoying recreational spaces here in the city. I am unable to trust his sense of safety is treated as precious as those who may wrongly see him as a threat just for existing. Visiting local grocery stores with armed guards, roaming the aisles does not make me feel safer. Losing history has proven that my brown skin removes my humanity to turn me into a subject for public safety officers rather than a single mom. The level of meticulous performance and hyper surveillance necessary to navigate all of this, it, it has to happen in order for me to try to feel safe, to make sure that my son makes it home safe, and that my neighbors make it home safe, and that's egregious. And even here today, the decision to enact a peaceful protest without civil disobedience was deliberate. We do not trust the integrity of the Burlington Police Department to do no harm to people gathered peacefully here today or to protect any of us individuals who might choose to respond to our enemies, other individuals who might choose to respond to our actions today. Individuals suppress their First Amendment rights as they fear repercussions in the exclusion from the workforce, and in increased danger in their communities for standing in solidarity on issues of racial injustice, all because that same expression born from a righteous anger might threaten someone else's sense of safety whose lives are deemed more important than their own. So what's happening to Taisha Green is a story that no one should be expected to endure. It has created an environment of fear for BIPOC across the state as a cautionary tale for what happens when you push back against powerful politicians, political entities. What's happened to Dr. Green is called a mobbing. As described by Dr. Maureen Duffy, mobbing is, quote, a form of abuse in which individuals, groups, Organizations who target a single person for ridicule, humiliation, and removal from the workplace can lead to deteriorating physical and mental health violence and even suicide. And I understand this tactic well. As mentioned in my public comment in support of Director Green in 2023, in the 15 years, now more, that I've lived here in Vermont, nearly every job I've had has had similar threads. Hire the black woman, demand more work than what she's compensated for, downplay her use of her accomplishments, defame her character, and then push them out. This harm continues with the economic devastation that comes from that displacement and the abuse that causes mental and physical distress to her and her family, the loss of another voice, their irreplaceable contributions to our state. I've seen this tactic successfully used in other BIPOC leaders. We've seen it happen to Claudine Gay, to Marilyn Mosby, to Annette Candia Bally, Bailey, and so many more. When I see similar abuses, the town of Bennington was allowed to get away with it. What happened in the name of every Bennington resident who placed their faith in the municipality to make it right, and no amount of international shame brought on to the state of Vermont was enough for them to try and make it right. For the harms they did to my family, they were never forced to make it right. Proven abuses, identified by the Human Rights Commission that show conspiracies between the chief of police, the town manager, the state's attorney, and known white supremacists, open racist, documented requests that they sent to T.J. Donovan, the attorney general, to bring charges against me of fraudulent activity. And even though my civil rights were violated and those, those points were Instantiated, it still was not enough for them to make it right. They removed the crucial component of restorative justice for my family by denying an opportunity to address the select board, the elected people who allowed this to happen, to hear from my family. The most basic of steps in the restorative process. Further, and this is important for you to know, the attorney representing the League of Cities and Towns, Michael Letty, who was also assigned as opposing counsel up against Taisha Green, immediately violated a term of those same things, the same agreement.
agreement by publicly casting aspersions on those findings as though they didn't exist. And no one has had repercussions, no one. In fact, those leaders are now publicly touted as highly regarded public servants, effectively erasing their own legacy of abuses to my family and many others done in the name of Bennington. Right? This is what keeps happening. This is the pattern they have found to be successful. They are fine-tuning it every single day. And at the end of the day, it's the government who determines who's a citizen and who's not. Probable cause in the private sector, bias and defamation of character, it becomes a gateway to strip our citizenship, to momentarily treat human beings as non-citizens, and to threat our, threaten our community. And the message you can get signaled out to everyday people and get strengthened by any unchecked prejudice, prejudices that they might hold to be truth. These actions tell our neighbors that we are not worthy of protection, but a threat to the peace and harmony of our community. It creates a chilling effect on all who must witness it, who share identities for the subjects of this type of hate, especially those who are most impacted by the prevalent abuses. And so if Burlington chooses to turn its back, it tells us that no one will come out okay. We will all lose. Now is not the time for the city to abandon the meaningful work of racial equity in Burlington. Now is not the time to dismantle the few programs that exist, taking away the few entities that were promised, removing the funding, and then saying that those who created this beauty deserve nothing. Deserve nothing. It is not the time for us to quit because without it, None of us in Vermont are safe, not a single one of us. But thank you for being here today. We have so much that we need to do in that building, so many lives to dismantle, so many that have become a mantra that nothing can be done, and that has never been true. Never been true. Thank you. My name is Farin. For those who do not know me, Farin Paris. I use she, her pronouns. And I am here to ask this community for a miracle. I am here because I am tired. I am tired of having a front row seat to what has been happening to former Director Green. I am tired of having to call in politicians, newspapers, and all the other individuals that have power and access to do the right thing. This character assassination on her is so not fair. It is a 24 modern day lynching and we must ask ourselves, how is this continuing to happen? Because here are the facts. Taisha Green left here in March of 2022. Juneteenth 2022, there is not a single contract on record in that building with her signature. She was not here. What's happening is there was another director that was here, and that is Director Pitt, who is serving as the interim director right now for the REIB. And what I've had to witness is Director Pitt, a woman of color, allowing another woman of color to take the hits and to be mobbed and to be humiliated and to have all her resources stripped to her while Pitt sits in this building. She knows the truth. Mayor Emma knows the truth. These people know the truth. Every night, panic attacks. Every night, is Taisha gonna show up for the next day? What, does she still have the will to live? Every night, why are we still begging you to see my humanity, Courtney? Why are you, why are we begging for black lives to have work? Because everyone continues to treat us as if we are three-fifths. Everyone continues to treat black women as if our bodies can endure so much because of the systematic racism patterns that are in our history. Our bodies have been abused. They've been worked on medically. We've been stripped of things that are our ideas. This is not anything new. This is quite the playbook recipe that City Hall is doing. And instead of doing the right thing with the new administration that's in place, they are continuing the harm of Moreau Weinberg. 
They are continuing the harm of the past administration. If you saw the article that was written by Courtney from Seven Days, the title of it was changed by Sasha, the editor. When you look at that title that says, uh, Taisha Green wants 7.5 million from the city. What they are saying for people who read that without compassion, without empathy, it says, how dare this Negro hold us accountable? That is what it says. And you can't tell me it's not because I am black and you are not. And you hurt my heart with the interviewing you did of many of us all your fucking heart, Taisha Moore. And it's not okay. It is not okay. I am tired of seeing my black women cry. I am tired of seeing my black women want to give up. I'm tired of the suicidal ideation. I'm tired of the attempt. Wake up, Burlington. This is not a game. Just over a year ago when we protested, we had four times the people here. We're getting complacent. We're getting tired. I know there's so much happening. Today is October 7th, where I see a post from our Vice President of the United States only acknowledging one side of the problem and not honoring our Palestinian siblings. This is the country that we work in and this is the government of this building. Emma is a mayor. She is the pretty much on president level for this city. If Malone Weinberger can use his power to cover up cops who harm black children and get payouts, to hire up to, um, to cover up other department heads who are responsible with so much debt, $14 million. Last year when an audit was done, Catherine Shaw's department was in debt for $14 million. She's a white woman, but we want to audit the black office of the city. We want to fucking lose all this energy over 135 dollars that were overspent, why do the rules work for them and not for her? It's racism. Clear and simple. She was the first black department head our city has ever had. Emma is the first lesbian mayor our city has ever had. We cannot celebrate her being the first without while we step on the first black lesbian department head. That is not okay. And the reason why there's also less people here is because Emma is beloved and her white privilege protects her. That is real. I, Fareen, was a part of that campaign. I was part of that team that was like, let's fucking go. Let's put more of, let's put heart back into this work. I invited her into my home, into my home. She sat across me on a couch where she would talk about why she wrote the letter for Taisha a year ago surrounded by brown and black people and other white individuals that are our advocates. To be fast forward to see her just walk away. Walk away. I don't understand. I called her two weeks ago. Emma, I can't do this anymore. And I need you to understand what is at stake. And what does she do? She releases Taisha's personal, fi personal files and correspondence between her lawyer and the city to seven days. Seven days requested stuff that they shouldn't have asked for and they know it because they were surprised they got it. And instead of holding the message of the letter campaign in order to bring justice to Taisha, they went the way of mobbing, right? What y'all don't know that they did not put in the article is the 7.5 million Half of it was back for community reparations right here in Burlington, right? But that wasn't in the article. That wasn't in the article. They made it feel like this woman is like, give me 7.5. That's bullshit. That is bullshit. Because she, even when her trying to do what she needs for her, she's still thinking about our community. No one has to do that. How many people try to pursue a mediation? You're like, not just me, but my whole narrative. We have the mantra. We leave nobody behind. If you're inviting me to come forward, I'm taking all the homies with me. I am Skippy, baby. I am Skippy, right here. Hell yeah. So what I need from us today, from us tomorrow, and weeks after weeks, we cannot stop until the city of Burlington invites Taisha and her attorney to the table for mediation. To send this woman to fuck 
in court, well, it will take forever. It's continuing to deny her of her health, of her money. She's put her, her house is on the market. Her house is on the market because there is no money. She's applied for over 400 jobs and has not gotten one. If Why? You, if, Why? Because she's black and this city has mobbed her. And That's one more thing you need to know. When Taisha was in the city of Minneapolis, that city government called Burlington because they were trying to stir stuff up in Minneapolis. Instead of the city having her back, which the non-disclosure agreement said, they decided we're gonna fuck with her too. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of the person who's watching the door while someone gets assaulted, and then when the assaulter comes out, you're like, I'm gonna take my turn. That is what Burlington did. They're worse than me. Humanity, please. Save the black femmes, please. I don't want to see one of us die. It shouldn't take a death like George Floyd to wake us up. We said we commit to this, where are we? My daughter, I was like, Melody, she's 11. Is there anything you want me to say? She's like, why is it as a child, I have to fear my black mom can be hurt? And that's real. She's seen our car tagged with the N word when we speak up. She's seen people flip on my business. This is not a game. It's not just about Taisha, it's about Kyle, it's about Lydia, it's about Kathleen, it's about, no, it's about all of us. No liberation without liberation for all. I invite you to please, if you have the energy, speak today at public forum. I invite you to please take the labor off of black women trying to save themselves yes. and have please. other individuals please. come forward because I am tired. Your and turn. I am depleted, and there's not enough resources you can gift me for Kaya to be these modern day Harriet Tubmans. Do your fucking job, city of Burlington. This is, I got a life to live, kids to raise, a business to run. But if we didn't stay on this, this would have gone under the carpet. We've been battling, I'm on 930 days since we took over the first bagel shop with the previous mayor. 930 days. Why is nobody helping? It's 
shouldn't be so difficult. Three fucking specters, you think we come? Cause we wanna argue and cause trouble? We come to help, damn it. Because when you need us, we are right fucking there. But when we need you, where you at? Where you at? Sick of this shit. I'm 61 years old. A grandma of seven. And I got two great grandnephews born this year. My daddy just turned 80. Can I fucking live? Can I breathe? It shouldn't be so damn hard for us. It should be simple, easy. All you need to do is try a little love. I am canceling fucking hate. I'm so sick of it. Kamala for president, goddammit. Oh! I want to let everyone know that the city council meeting is begun. Um, it was, I don't know if they're in executive session or not, but the doors have opened at least for that. No executive session today. So I do want to give an opportunity if folks do feel like they want to sign up so they can go do that. Um, if you want to bear witness to what's happening with the conversations in there as well, we want to uh, encourage them. And just, at the end of the day, the anger is here because it's real. And I want us to remember what Audrey Lord said. There is information and energy in the anger. It's not just for anything. I am a black woman living in Burlington, Vermont. I actually have to be so careful with what comes out my mouth. I have to have receipts all the time. We have receipts, a 14-page document of the receipts. So please, rather than allowing us to keep going down, I cannot, the amount of times I'm like, do I do this thing called life? Let me just keep it real. The amount of times that I'm like, holy shit, I can't do this no more. Being fetal position in my driveway, being like, what is going on? That's why it broke my heart when I called Sasha, when he posted that article. And I was like, please change the title back. Do you know what that's going to do to her? Do you know she tried to take her life last year? And you know what he said? Oh, wow. Well. Oh, wow. Well. He would not listen to black women. Why? Because people don't see us. People don't see us. People care about pets and things more than they care about us sometimes. And I'm not making it up. I'm not making it up. We couldn't get someone to write a letter campaign with 10 submissions of letters of support for Taisha. But we'll write about a, like a vegetable. We'll write about a fucking pet. Please, let us live. Public comment starts at 6.30. We invite you, if there is someone speaking and it's in align with the mission of protecting black femmes, supporting Palestine, anything that is in support of vulnerable communities, put your signs up because that in there is set up for us not to speak. The master's house can't be taken down by master's tools. And city council is a master's tool. Everybody gets two minutes to speak no matter if it's a painful story or a celebratory story, no matter if you're someone who has anxiety and you need another minute, that system doesn't work. But what will work if we keep showing up, speaking the truth to power, and holding folks accountable who are doing the mobbing of this community. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for holding space with us. I thank you for giving us moments to express. And for those who want to continue in, we are going to go inside. Thank you so much.